Hey everyone, this morning I want to show you how I designed my Fishman monster set for a recent adventure I ran. Now for those of you who don't know, a monster set is essentially a collection or grouping of monsters that are connected either thematically or they have some synergy developed between them or there's like a common thread that connects them and as players interact and encounter these monsters, they, uh, they can learn how they develop or how they, how they escalate. Um, so that they can have like a working knowledge uh, as they as they kind of go about the session or even the campaign. And so for these fishmen, I want to show you how I developed each one, kind of my thought process for each type, each category, and why I, I made some of the decisions I did when I make these monsters. I have my form here, which I've tried to develop to highlight how I think about monsters and, and walk you through that process. So. Let's get into it with the very first monster, which is the Guppy. Now, my Guppy is my Mook. Um, a Mook is essentially just a minion. It's a low-level monster. It's kind of like the, the swarm, goblins, whatever. My Guppy is, is, is that. So what I do when I develop my first monster is I have my name. I just named him the Guppy, and then I've got my categories. I've got a Mook, a Brute, a Support, and a Boss, and we're going to do each one of those. But a mook typically has one HP, so they just die in a single hit, and then they uh, maybe they have a heart at the same time, and then they have usually one action. Then on the left side in ICRPG, there's kind of a presentation of what challenges a particular monster might have, and so these um, thinking about what challenges helps me to develop the actions that they do, as well as I can have similar challenges across the board. Or, or connect a few things. So in the case of a guppy, um, I ended up choosing force them, which is like force movement, um, and then repel. So having a reason for them to kind of be repelled by these monsters or to, or to stay back. Uh, then I also have their effort and stat bonuses. In a particular case, a mook usually has pretty low bonuses, usually one or two at most. So in guppy's case, I have a plus one to their strength. So they get one type of stat, they get a bonus on everything else is just really flat. They don't do any extra damage beyond just the flat die roll. But then I start thinking about the actions. What does a guppy do? Or what can I what can I think of? And I typically try to res like restrain myself from going too deeply with monster actions because I already have a hard enough time remembering all of the stats and all of the bonuses and all the things. For example, in the um, the Mines of Dornhold, which I ran these for, um, I had listed guppies to have one HP, but I can guarantee you that I forgot that and I ended up construing it to have one, ar one heart. It worked out just fine, but this is why I want to try to keep things as simple as possible because there's a lot going on as we play, and so trying to have something that's simple and streamlined should help as I, as I, as I run games. So, the first thing, basic attack. Try to have uh, a mook with just a very basic attack, which in, in this case is just they got a knife, a, a, a gak you, and they deal weapon damage. Simple. Um, then other things like that, I start looking at some of the challenges that they face. So in the case of force movement, so they try to force movement, they have a water jet. Out comes some water, there's a strength contest between the guppy and the, uh, the player, and if the Guppy wins, the, the target or the player is pushed up to far in a direction. Um, so now guppies can start spraying them with water and start forcing players to move around or, or get back or stay away or do whatever. Kind of builds off both force move and repel. And the last thing, which was a reason to repel players from actually getting close to guppies, um, is this slime. I was inspired by like the hagfish, uh, which has like this coating of slime that they're the defense mechanism. But anyways, so essentially whenever um, you attempt a melee or a touch attack against a guppy, you take a minus one to all of your rolls for each attempt. So whether you hit or not, you're, you're scuffling with the guppy, you're gonna get that slime on you and it's just viscous and it's gross and it's just sticky. And so you get a minus one to all your rolls. There are ways to get it off, like a heart of effort or, or whatever, but this kind of keeps players back and forces some uh, reevaluation of how they're going to go about fighting these guppies, especially when there's a lot of them. And so you can see this is just my basic core mook guppy. Now, after that, I go to a brute. Now, uh, a brute is essentially 
something that is a little bit tougher. It's going to deal some damage, and it's going to, like, really hit the party when they need to, especially when the mooks may not be dealing as much. So for this case, uh, I had a pike, which is kind of like my piranha with an axe or whatever, so he's my brute. Um, I give them, you know, one or two hearts, usually, and enough that they can stick around for a round or two. That's, that's really my hope with a brute. A mook, I want them to be gone in a round. I want players to feel awesome as they just cut through them. But a brute, I want, I want them to be around for like one or two rounds, but not so so much that they're not getting any progress. So I'll usually give them a, a heart. Um, they get an action. In the case of stat bonuses, I usually go a little higher than you might think because again, players are really good about clearing out enemies, and so I want to hit hard the one or two chances I get. So for the Brute, Pike, I get plus five to all my stats and plus three to my effort, whatever it is. I was then thinking about the challenges that I wanted to present. And so a Brute, again, I want to hit hard. He's going to go for gear and he's going to hit all. So the very first uh, action that he gets is a heavy swing. Essentially with that axe, he just gets to roll and he hits all near with weapon. And so he's just going to roll once for his strength roll. And then whoever is near and he gets higher than their target, he's going to hit all of them for weapon, um, plus three. The next thing he's going to do is build off the gear challenge, which is cruising for a bruising. It's a basic punch, so he just kind of slams in with his fist. Um, if he rolls a four on his d4, because that's what basic is, then he destroys a random piece of gear. So there's a 25% chance that he'll destroy a piece of gear, and that's, that's before... Uh, the weapon um, before the basic effort bonus is attached so he's gonna deal he's gonna deal some damage whenever he does that punch but there's a chance that he might destroy his gear as well additionally we're gonna go for uh, a slide so I was thinking about the the guppies and the mooks they have that water jet so now as the mooks spray water everywhere the pike is gonna use that water to kind of like slide across the floor um, move far and hit all targets past in a straight line. So again, he's going to roll, he's going to be able to move far, and he's just going to kind of like swipe at everybody that he passes, dealing some damage with just weapon. The last thing that I'll have is down here at the bottom is I also include a couple kind of key strategies or kind of tweaks so that it's not just these same basic actions, these more advanced actions. And there's either you can have a monster can have some dirty tricks could have a timer action or a death rattle. In the case of, of Brute, I wanted to have him to have a timer action. So in the event that he gets to stick around for a little bit longer, he's gonna have essentially a D4, will roll when, when they appear, and at that cadence, he's then gonna go to a chopping block maneuver where he'll knock a target prone, he'll completely ignore the target's defense, and he will deal ultimate. Um, then the player, whoever is targeted, can roll a dex save for half so that if they make that save, they'll take half that damage, but otherwise it's it's just gonna, you know, auto hit um, from that chopping block, uh, and then they have to make a save for it. So that's where you got some gear, you've got some hit alls, and you just got some heavy hits, because that's what a brute is meant to do. Mooks kind of overwhelm, but a brute hits hard. And I like having somebody that hits hard in every game. All right, so that's my brute. The next up is a support. So for the, uh, for the support, what I ended up having is this thing called an Elder Ink. And so an Elder Ink is this kind of octopus fish man. He's a support. He still has just one heart. of um, one heart. He's got one action. Um, and for, uh, for me, he's also got some smaller bonuses. So a good support will have a little bit less. They won't hit as hard as a brute when it comes to like straight up damage but in this case you can I can also go a little bit higher on their effort when they're supporting or, or whatever and they also restrict it to wisdom intelligence and just magic so a support is gonna have lower stats but I think they're gonna have some more um, kind of intense abilities and that's kind of usually how I run it so in the case of an elder ink I thought about boosting and poisoning so what I did is the first thing is just a basic boost. You get to heal an, a target ally with magic. So this 
Elder Ink sits in the back and starts healing people the longer he's around. So he's going to stay back. Now, with the support, again, these are people that kind of stay behind. They're, they're off to the side. They're, they're supporting. They're not in the forefront. So they become a target for players pretty quickly. So I was also thinking of a way to kind of keep them around a little bit longer. And that's where the idea of camouflage came in. So this octopus can camouflage itself and it requires a wisdom check to hit. Otherwise, you kind of miss or you're whatever. So before you, you strike for damage, you've got to roll wisdom to hit. Then additionally, that more intense action, I've got an ink spray. So all rolls are hard for D4 rounds um, to a near target. So if someone gets close to the to the elder ink, they can spray their ink, um, and then that that tar that player's rolls are now hard for D4 rounds um, as they get close. So again, you're you put you're slightly poisoning them. You're boosting up your allies. The support is designed to kind of stick around so they can continually help their team and the other monsters, but they're not so strong that they're there forever um, and they're just kind of a little tricky uh, and that's where I like to have my supports give them give them a few tricks and a few uh, a few things that kind of build up and help them with their team and themselves but at the same time I know that supports monsters are usually really targeted so I ended up giving this uh, elder ink a death rattle now I've talked about death rattles before and as I've played and, and whatever I've kind of tweaked it to match more what I'm thinking because a death rattle to me is less so the idea that a monster is bleeding or really hurt or really low on health and then it does something special but for me instead a lot of my monsters just get wiped really quickly before I even have a chance to have them at low health like they go from a good amount of health to zero and there's never really a lot of time where they're at low health so instead what I end up doing is a death rattle which is kind of like an action that they take when they die so in the case of this elder ink an ink bomb goes off so they have got they've got their ink um, and when they die all of a sudden their their ink um, explodes into an ink bomb and then all near make a con save or all their rolls are hard and they take basic so it's like this very potent ink gets in their eyes, it stings, it burns. Um, it's gonna make their heart, their rolls hard, probably for a D4 um, rounds. And then they take some damage as well from just just that, that sudden explosion or, or, or whatever. So that's where I was just thinking that a support, they are gonna die, so we'll give them a death rattle. And I'm not saying that every support has a death rattle. It's just something that I included for this monster set. All right, then the last one is the boss. Now the boss is um, like the big baddie, the, the the big scary thing that they have to deal with over the course of the course of the uh, monster set. This could be the big bad. This could be um, just a monster. And so for this, I had the angler, and the angler is. A lot more hearts, but not too many, because again, the best way to kind of escalate the uh, the fight is not to give more hearts that can turn into a slog. So I typically five or six is about the max that I go, but giving them a few more actions or giving them a bigger boost um, can can really help. Still, same thing with brutes. Um, I want them to stick around for a few rounds, but I also know that players will deal with bosses pretty quickly if, if they don't have support or else or other things so that's where the support can come in they can heal up the boss they can do whatever but you can see that I've given him five hearts he has a plus eight to all of his stats and a plus five to all of his effort so it, when he hits he's most likely gonna hit and he's gonna hit hard and that's what I want for my bosses I also put down my challenges for them which is control and gear so now I have a brute who is destroying gear and I have a um, boss who can destroy gear and then I've also got my guppies and my supports who are going to help with some of the actions because for example light when you first enter the presence of the angler you make a charisma save and you walk to the angler for d4 rounds and eventually kind of being open for a, for a straight up attack from the angler. You can see how if the guppies are working properly, you've got some negative ones for the slime and you've got the inks that are making things hard. So 
the, the, the guppies and the supports are helping kind of reduce their a player's ability to roll high so that these saves become much tougher when the angler shows up. And so the second thing they're doing is you've got bite. So once they get close to the angler, you've got a double ultimate, so he's going to hit hard. Um, and then players can make a defense save to either to take half damage, but also destroy their best piece of gear. So that's the challenge, is if you take that bite, you're going to, you can reserve some of the damage, but you're also losing your best piece of gear, your highest uh, bonus. And so you also got the brute who's destroying gear. So between the two of them, players are, are kind of getting some of their, their equipment, their armor kind of destroyed so that when the angler shows up, he, he hits harder and he kind of, their players are a little squishier. Additionally, they have a flashbang um, with the light on the angler's face. You move out of scene for one round and reappear anywhere. This is kind of just a, a defense mechanism for the, uh, for the angler. And so again, one of the, uh, the themes and the threads that I'm trying to develop is that the majority of these, the guppies, the, the uh, elder inks, and the angler all have a defense mechanism and so hopefully players can pick up on that and they learn that there's something that these fishmen use to defend themselves and in the case of the angler it's that flashbang but the last thing that i also give the ross is a dirty trick um, and a dirty trick to me is something that a, a, a an enemy can I really just pull out and it, it just does something automatically or it kind of twists the rules a little bit um, it's it's not something where I try to be unfair but it is something that I try to pose as like here is a challenge that you have to face with and this is something that this monster can do that you just have to kind of deal with um, as a player it's a challenge and here's you got to find the solution so in the case of the angler I did tongue strike so Automatically, if he pulls out, a, uses his dirty trick, um, he gets to just straight up pull a target up to far into a bite. No rolls, no, you know, whatever. It just, it just happens. But here's the thing: with dirty tricks, I also limit the number of times they can do it, um, so that it's not just kind of cheesy and unfair. So a lot of the times, the maximum amount of times a monster could pull off a dirty trick is five. Um, otherwise, it's usually you know two or three, maybe even one. They can do it one time during the course of this session. Um, so this monster can pull somebody in and, and bite them. And between the flashbang, or I mean between the bite and the support and everything, this can lead into um, the, the, the all the monsters before that building up and kind of weakening everything, so the angler has an easier time to take on the the players. So between all of these monsters, this is this is my monster set. I, I have a, a a grouping of monsters that make sense together, that work together, that thematically are connected, but there's synergy developed between them. And then over the course of like a one shot, it, it you can't quite pick up on all of all of these intricacies, but you can start. Uh, seen them, but over the course of, like, say, a campaign, as they're facing these more and more often, you can then start mixing and matching so that, like, in the course of a one shot, you can have the first grouping they're going to have is mooks and brutes, and then brutes and supports, and then mooks, brutes, and supports, and then here's a boss and a brute, and then you just you can develop and include variety of monsters and that develops variety that makes it so that every encounter every scene is a little bit different they've got different enemies and that's why i really like monster sets and why i like to develop them in groups of four because it gives me a lot of options it gives me a lot of variety and it allow, allows me to really have an escalating path for my enemies plus um, what i like to do is with that template I can print these out in groupings of four, and now I have a one-page monster set where I can go through and see, okay, this is my mook, this is my brute, this is my support, and this is my boss, and I can see what I've done for other monsters and build off of them so I can plan out how am I going to include them all in the game. So I'm gonna have this uh, PDF um, available on my blog. Um, I'd love to hit your thoughts on this monster set. Um, what you think about them, how you would do things differently, and what monster sets you'd like to see in the future. So leave those in the comments, um, and uh, we'll look forward to the next set of monsters in the next game. So thanks, everybody.